Hello everyone. Today I would like to introduce you a case study, Aril Manonet project. The results that I'm going to show you are a part of a PhD thesis. The target compounds that we would like to synthesize are profanes. What we see in the slide, S naproxen and S ribuprofen. We might know these compounds as painkillers for our daily use. And these compounds are also known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The enzyme of interest is arylmanolate decarboxylase. The wild type enzyme decarboxylates arylmanolate compounds to R enantiomers. However, S profins, S enantiomers, have the desired medical effect. This PhD thesis was a collaboration together with Graz University of Technology, with the group of Robert Christ. And from the group of Robert Christ, we received the highly S-selective mutant. The whole project aims the optimization from the fermentation to immobilize the enzyme for stability reasons, to run the biocatalysis in different reactors, and to get the final product in hand. Our first analysis showed that the enzyme has very low process stability. So the half-life time of the enzyme was determined to be 1.2 hours. What we see here is a decrease in the residual activity amount of time. So to deal with these stability issues, we wanted to immobilize the enzyme. We also wanted to understand the enzyme kinetics so that we can decide which reactor type and operation mode we can use, and at the end, to isolate the product, to get the product in hand. First, we used the purified enzyme to immobilize this purified enzyme for the comparison of different resins. So on the left side in x-axis, we see different immobilization resins. On the y-axis, we see specific activity. We also compared the change in specific activity among three different batches. Overall, although amino acrylate carrier didn't show the highest activity, we decided to go with this carrier because this carrier had the highest or the bigger particle and pore size, which would be very advantageous for process development. In this experiment, or these experiments, we used immobilized purified enzyme. Since purification is very costly, we also wanted to compare the performance of immobilized cell lysate. So what we see here on the right side, on y-axis activity, on x-axis four different batches. The immobilized purified enzyme lost 70% of activity between batch 1 and batch 4. However, immobilized cell lysate lost only 40% of activity between batch 1 and batch 4. We attributed this better result while using cell lysate to the foreign enzymes that are found in cell lysate. When we now analyze the process stability of immobilized cell lysate, we found the half-life time as 8.6 days. So we observed about 158-fold increase when we compare with the purified free enzyme, which was only 1.2 hours. So at the end, for our further experiments, we decided to work with cell lysate for immobilization, which will save us money and energy, and we have high stability. As the next, we analyze the kinetics of the S-selective arylmanolate decarboxylase mutant. On the left side, we see the typical michaelis menten curve, while we use different naproxen manolate concentrations. 
we see the Vmax Km as well as the Ki value. Ki value for the product S naproxen. So what we also know from the inhibition kinetics, the Ki over Km value is 1.2, which is more than one. That means we can still run this reaction efficiently since the product inhibition not that severe. So what we see here is the michaelis menten equation with the competitive product inhibition. And this equation was used for the simulation of michaelis menten And we also see, on the other hand, when we analyze the product inhibition, we use different amounts of naproxen and we see the decrease in the activity of the enzyme for decarboxylation in the presence of different product concentrations. So overall, we decided we can run this reaction productive without in the product removal, since the Ki over Km value was more than one. As the next, we compared the performance of immobilized cell lysate, one in the steel tank reactor and one in rotating bed reactor. On the left side, what we see is a typical progressive curve, the product formation over time, the synthesis of s naproxen our desired product, and the red dots are from the rotating bed reactor, blue squares are from the steel tank reactor. So these data points are from experimental data. What we also see is this black line, and this black line is from progressive curve analysis from the simulation. For the simulation, we use the Vmax, Km, and Ki values that we determined while using the initial rates kinetics. At the same time, there's a possibility in progressive curve analysis to get the KD value, the deactivation rate constant, and this is used to get the best fit between the simulation and the experimental data. Next, we use the immobilized cell lysate in repetitive batch experiments. What I just showed you was from batch number one, whereby we observed the full conversion of naproxen malonate to S naproxen in less than six hours. So after the first batch, what we did, we took out the immobilized enzyme, we stored the immobilized enzyme in fridge, and then we run the second batch on the second day with the fresh substrate. We did the same for the third day, fourth day, and at the end, after five consecutive batches, we always observed the full conversion. The reaction slowed down, but still full conversion to s naproxen both in steel tank reactor and rotating bed reactor. Here I have to highlight that to work with rotating bed reactor is very practical because you can easily take out the enzyme, the immobilized enzyme, and uh, use on the second day. When we now compare the steel tank reactor and rotating bed reactor, the half-life time in the steel tank reactor and in rotating bed reactor were quite similar. Total turnover numbers we observed uh, was a bit higher in steel tank reactor, but still, as I highlighted, to work with rotating bed reactor is very practical when you work with repetitive batches. And at the end, we uh, collected the products that we uh, prepared or synthesized in different reactors. We precipitated the product, filter out and dry to get the white powder in hand. We observed about 10 grams or we obtained about 10 grams of the product with a very high yield, 92%. The s naproxen that we synthesized had more than 99% enantiomeric excess. Fortunately, while using this very highly esterective mutant, we calculated the productivity to be 140 kilogram product per kilogram immobilized enzyme. And this number was very high compared to the benchmarking numbers that were published in some reviews that we know from biocatalysis. So we can really here claim that we developed a highly productive process. 
With this, I would like to thank the European Commission for the Interfaces project and for you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.